Yo, what up? It's C Lance. You're tuning into Breaking Records Radio, my favorite radio for underground hip hop. And I show you support. Peace. Breaking Records Radio and the place to be. You know what it is. It's your host, Maloney. And I got a super special guest with me on, uh, on, uh, in the interview with me right now, man. Like this guy, I've been, I've been a fan of this guy for many years. Um, I'm honored to be able to talk to him right now. Um, you know, I, some people find the term super producer kind of corny, but I think, uh, I think this guy fits the bill if you're going to talk super producer, man. Um, I mean, I, I could keep going, but, you know, let, let's just let the, <laughs> let, let's just let the dialogue, um, you know, between us to find, uh, you know, more of uh, some of your accolades and stuff, man. I got I got Sea Lance with me, man. How's it going? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks. For, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. You know, I've. Uh, I've been a fan of your work for many years, um, you know, from the from Vinnie Paz, Heavy Metal Kings up to Swollen Members. And then next thing you know, the whole Stomp Down movement. And then uh, as of late, like you've just been all over the place, body and shit for everybody, whether it be, you know, R.A. or uh, Ritz or Chris Webby or, you know, like you've been everywhere, man. Um, and so, you know, there's so many talking points. Um, but, yeah. you know, I'd like I'd like to start back from the very beginning. Um, if that's cool with you. Yep. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. Well, um, first off, you know, um, I know that one of your first interviews was with uh, actually one of our hosts for our show, Alex Kuchba. He he uh, runs the Underground Vault. Yep, yep. Yeah, he's one of the hosts of our show. So I was listening to that interview a little earlier today. So I did get a little bit of um some of your early stuff, but I know he skipped over it. So if I, I'm, we're just going to start right from square one, if that's cool with you. Yep, definitely. All right, man. Um, and I know in that interview you mentioned uh, Chronic 2001 was one of your biggest influences to really start producing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like for every producer like around my age or, or even younger than me or older than me, like that has to be an album that you look at and, and be like, I want to I do this. I want to do what this guy's doing, you know, because like everybody, like me personally, like I look at Dre as a as a producer and not necessarily a rapper, even though, you know, he raps on that album, but like, and, and just also like all the guys that he's produced through his career, like we wouldn't have Eminem, we wouldn't have Snoop Dogg, you know, um, Ice Cube, you know, Busta Rhymes, like all these guys that he like, you know, produced. So yeah, that album really like, like helped mold my, my sound and everything. And like, you might not hear West Coast beats because I'm from Boston, so I'm not really West Coast, but um, I know I've done some stuff for Merck that's like, kind of like West Coasty. And I don't know, man, I, like, I just love that stuff. Yeah, well, you know, and you definitely, you definitely have, um, especially for Merck, you definitely hit some of that West Coast sound and stuff as of late, especially too. But, um, you know, I, yeah. think, I think that's, um one thing that I kind of found you about it too because I mean obviously 2001 is you know that sonically the production on that you know there was really nothing else like it at the time like that was just you know no. that face that loud and and so clear like the way yeah like, like some of those samples like David Axelrod sample on the last the next episode like how yeah. did you tweak that sample to be so clean I don't know I don't know I think he, I think you had to have somebody replay it. Yeah. But I, because, because if you listen to the sample, it sounds like the same instrument, but it's way like, it's a, it's almost like the sample was like, was mixed through like a spaceship, like to make it sound like next level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I know. So Incredible. I don't know. Incredible. For years I tried to study what he did with, to, to make samples sound like that. <laughs> it's like a cheat code. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's it's absolutely phenomenal, like the the way that sonically he was able to do that. And um, I think you yeah. might be right. I think you might be right. I think Scott Storch might have replayed some of those samples. He he definitely did. I mean, like still Dre. I mean, I don't know if that originally was a sample. Like, I don't know if Scott Storch, uh, you know, he just came up with that in his head. But the man, that one. I mean, like that beat alone. You could listen. Like that's one of the beats you could listen to on loop with no lyrics. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, like others come to mind, like, um, uh, you know, Shook Ones part two, like, you know, like you could just listen to the beat 
you know, like it's just classic, man. Yeah. But I, I think it's cool too, though, because um, with that being such a pinnacle in production style, um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily, I mean, like, like you said, until recently, you wouldn't add, you wouldn't necessarily pick that one out. You know what I mean? Like you can definitely tell in the earlier work, there's some of that, um, you know, like the stoop influence and stuff, but even like moving on from there, there's a lot of that kind of nineties New York sound. Um, you yeah. know, like a lot of the stuff you did for mad child kind of like almost reminiscent of like Pete rock, uh, later nineties, Pete rock. Um, you know, even a little bit of like later nineties, uh, large professor stuff like that. Yep. 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 I mean, like, I mean, those guys are legends, but I wouldn't say that those two guys you mentioned weren't like influences for me, really. Like, really? I know that's, I know that's weird to say, but no, they weren't like, like we were talking about Dre, like Stoop is, is my biggest influence. Um, Alchemist, like, oh. DJ Premier, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, uh, uh, DJ Muggs, even like, I mean, like even Necro is like his, like, you know, the stuff he did for like nonfiction, like, you know, like stuff like that. It's just like, you, you mentioned the Mad Child stuff. Like I used a lot of like melodic kind of like carnival type beats. Like when people think of, when people think of Mad Child, they kind of think of like those up-tempo, like, you know, carnival stuff. You know what I mean? I had a lot of that stuff for the, for the earliest stuff I did with him. It's kind of like that, but I, but I see what you mean about like the nineties, large professor stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I, I mean, I mean, like I said, I think I have influence from a lot of guys, but like, but like most specific is, is Stoop definitely. And yeah. uh, especially the stuff I've done with Paz, like you can hear, you can kind of hear Stoop mixed with Alchemist, mixed with, you know, Dre, mixed with Premier. It's like, I, I took a piece of all those guys. And I personally believe I made my own sound. Like, I think people know a Sealance beat when, like, when it plays. But, uh, yeah, I like definitely those guys, man. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely curated your own sound over the years. Even back then, though, like, pretty much since you know like the dope sick days like i could pretty well like i was like oh like you've had your own kind of signature sound which i think is one thing that you know that's probably part of the reason i mean one thing is obviously the connections you've made and being doing good business doing good work and being referred and stuff like that but i think um the fact that you are able to kind of create your own signature sound so early on, I think really probably helped separate you from the batch of a lot of other producers at the time. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think the, I think that I pride myself on having like big loud drums and like maybe not, uh, um, like not so much back in like 2010 or, or uh, 2011, whenever a dope set came out, I think it was 2010. But um, like back then, I feel like everyone had the big drums. Like fast forward now, you hear a lot of the just like people like looping samples with no drums. And it's just a lot of like slow, like, you know, 50 BPM beats. And I'm just sitting there like I can't nod my head to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why you always hear like the loud snare. And I even remember I would get like I would get like hate comments on like on my Facebook and stuff being like, your drums are always, you know, the same or they're too loud or, and I'm just like, well, don't listen to it. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, but I, I always prided myself on just having like that snare that like punches you in the face. Yeah. You know, like, cause that's the stuff that I liked. That's, yeah. that's what for me, like, like that's what Primo would always do that. Like, you know, Stoop always had drums in his beats, you know? So that's just like, you know, I love that stuff, man. Like, the, like a hard snare that you can just feel in your chest. You Honestly, um, you named DJ Premier a few times. DJ Premier is my favorite producer of all time. And that's exactly yep. why. Is a lot of times, Primo won't even put bass in his beats. They're not even a bass. No, no. You know what I mean? But those drums smack so fucking hard yeah. that yeah. it doesn't, you don't need the bass. You don't need a bass line. No, no. As long as the kick and snare hit, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm a big fan 
kind of uh, really hard drums too. And I think, uh, you know, and that even goes to the Dr. Dre 2001 too. Like Dre's always been good with, uh, you know, the low end and the beats as well. Like his bass lines are always crisp and clean. And, but like his always. drum still, he finds a pocket for the, for the drums to have their own air to breathe while the bass line has its own air to breathe and they're not competing with one another. You know what I mean? I think that's yeah, one of the yeah. That's one of the things that really makes his production so stand out compared to a lot of other people who, you know, may even have similar sounds to him in certain phases of his career. I, I, I think one of his biggest uh, talents is he knows how to mix. He knows how to, he knows how to mix his kick with the bass, like, so they don't overlap, you know? Yeah. Like, I think that's one of his biggest talents, just like the mix of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, like you said, when 2001 came out, it sounded like nothing. Like it sounded like nothing else you've ever heard. I think it's because like he, the mix just was like, like, like at that time, like other albums were here. He was like up here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's just insane. And it's incredible too, right? Cause I know, um, I'm not sure your age. I'm not going to ask you to air it out, but I know I know we're both um, a little younger than probably some of the hip hop maybe that we were into growing up. And um, but it's the same thing that happened when he dropped his first album, right? Like when that album, The Chronic, came out, it redefined how you mix hip hop beats. Like everyone's like, "What the fuck is this? How yeah, did you yeah. do this? How did you filter that Parliament bass line out? Like how did you what? You know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the G funk, the G funk yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Even yeah. if you listen to, even if you go back and listen to this, to the samples, there's like a thing on YouTube. It's like, it's just like Dr. Dre samples or something. But if you listen to the samples that he used on the original Chronic, and then you listen to the beat, like once again, it sounds like someone replayed it. Yeah. It, yeah. Right. So Absolutely it's just incredible. It's just insane. Yeah. I don't think there'll ever be. Like, you know, like the way hip hop is now with just like an album gets released on Spotify and you're on to something else in the next week. I don't think they'll ever be as big as an impactful album as as Chronic, as, uh, Chronic was. I, I think you're right, man. I think you're right. And, the, and with that being said, too, like, uh, you know, with the way that hip hop even is now, right? It's like, like you mentioned, a lot of a lot of drumless beats and just sample loops. Like a lot of people kind of bite in that Mad Lib ski. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Yep. I like Mad Lib for that, but I don't like everybody else doing that. You know what I mean? No, like, no, no. It's like um, I'm a I'm a fan of Derringer, the yeah. producer for Griselda. And then it's like once he started gaining momentum and like he was like producing all their stuff, you'd hear like a hundred other producers <laughs> making Derringer beats. Yeah, it's like right. Like I feel like I always hear like this, like the same Griselda beat, and then I, and then I'm just like, oh, this this is a Derringer beat, and then it's not him. It's just like some random kid making a Griselda beat. It's like, it's like if people want that sound, they're gonna go to Derringer, not some random kid. Yeah, you know what I mean, so it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, I understand. There's there's also like. Um, you try to like recreate that sound like like with me it's like i get influenced by guys like like alchemist and um in premiere and stoop and then like but then i'll find myself making a hundred stoop like beats so then i'm just like man i gotta i gotta focus on what i do best you know yeah because because paz will just go to stoop if he wants a stoop beat he'll just, he'll just text stoop he's not gonna come to me you know what i mean like like they come to me for my sound you know what i mean and when you're in the creative process, how do you get yourself out of that pocket? Even like I myself, right? I, I do produce as well. Um, but like, I find myself a victim of that sometimes. Like, you know, like, um, you know, someone will drop something or, you know, I'll go back and dig in the crates and find something and, and you know, some 90 shit. Like, you know, like maybe I'll be listening to Poor Righteous Teachers and I'll be like, ooh, that Miss Ghetto beat. And then that'll inspire me to start digging cooking some shit up and next thing you know I've made 10 beats that sound like something that'd be on a poor righteous teachers album and sometimes it's kind of hard to get out of that groove because you're so you're so like you know what I mean like how do you how do you snap yourself out of that um sorry somebody just tried calling me um how do you snap yourself out of that and kind of get back into the sea lance uh vibe so I know exactly what you're saying because 
I'll like throw on like an Eminem album from his 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 early albums, and then I'll start making a bunch of Slim Shady beats. But then, but then I'll just like I'll wake up the next day and listen to them and be like, who do I work with that's gonna use these? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So then I'll start like, and then like you know what I do? I'll go back to stuff that Paz has picked from me. Like I'll I'll listen to a season of the assassin or uh, um, the last two uh, JMT albums, and I'll just like and I'll just be like okay, like you know this is my sound. I got to get back into this, and then I'll just immediately go to start digging for samples. And you know, I try like this is gonna sound weird, but I try not to listen to to too much um hip hop like current hip hop because i feel like i'll get too influenced like i yeah. said like i said i'll listen to um you know how alchemist uh, drops those like uh, rappers best friend yep. instrumental projects i'll never forget like a couple years ago i was listening to like rappers best friend 4 or something and then i would just try to make those same beats like and, like in my mind i'm just like i'm going to make alchemist beats today so like now in like 2021, I try not to listen to too much stuff. Like I'll listen to like nineties alternative instead. Cause yeah. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to make a system of a downbeat. So <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not even physically capable of doing that. So I'll just, uh, I kind of listen to like nineties alternative and you know, I don't, uh, I just get like influenced for some reason. Like if I listen to, you know, even if I listen to like a JMT album from like 2006, like Paz doesn't necessarily pick those type of beats now. So yeah. it's like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of just like, this is what I want to hear, but it's not like what is going on now. So I have to make something different, you know, but you know, I just like, there'll be days where I'll make, I'll make like Alchemist beats or I'll, I'll, I'll make Primo beats, but I just wake up the next day. And I'm just, I just remind myself like, you know, people come to me for my, for my sound. I got to get back to what I do. Yeah. I think that's really important too, man. Cause, um, you know, like I said, it's very easy to fall in those traps of being inspired. And, um, yeah. at the same time too, it's, it's sometimes like, I think that's, that's a very unique talent you have to be able to actually just like, you know, to kind of not, try to listen to so much stuff because your fear of influence and just yeah. to your own guns you know because a lot of yeah. times um creative block will happen people actually you know like you'll need to go out and listen to stuff to become inspired so for you to be able to kind of draw that line and be like i need to get back to me and, and self-motivate and self-inspire i think that's a very very important tool that probably separates you once again from you know, the rest of the pack and which is partly probably why, you know, you do stick out so much because I think that's a very, yeah. very hard self-realization to have. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to ask too, I know um, when you did the interview with Alex years back, I think it's like seven year old interview, but at that time you said you make at least two beats every day. Do you still keep up that same work ethic? I'd say it's like three or four now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like three or four now. And I'll tell you why. Back then, what year, do you remember what year that interview was? I know that you guys are talking about uh, Snacks Just Giver. And uh, you had just started working with Murky at the time. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm not sure the timestamp of the year, but it was uploaded seven years ago. So if I had to guess, I'm going to say probably 2012, 2013. Okay, so it was before I really got it was before I really got heavy into working with Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I make so many more now is because the stuff I do with him is completely different than a Paz beat, than a snack beat, than a Chris Webby beat, than a Ritz beat. I've worked with so many of those guys so closely now and they all have different sounds. So like back then when I, when I did that interview, I was just strictly making Paz beats and, if, yeah. and, and if snack picked one, then all right, go ahead. But like now, like, it's just like the stuff that I do with Merck, it's way more, I don't want to say commercial, 
but it's way more like I guess less boom bap, if that makes sense. It's yeah, more yeah. it's more melodic, more, you know, more guitars, more more like it's more built around like, you know, singing, like singing hooks and stuff like that. So I work on that and then I have to switch gears and make a a beat that you want to bang your head against the wall. And then I got to switch gears again and then uh, do something for my instrumental projects that I'm, that I'm putting out. And then, you know, and then I got to make a double time Ritz beat. So I'm just like all, I'm just all over the place, <laughs> but that's what you, but like to your point before, that's what keeps me, you know, that's what keeps me going. Like that's what keeps me from losing motivation, losing inspiration. Like, you know, because I'm always doing something different. I think if I sat here every day and made a 2010 match child beat, or I made a, um, a Jedi mind tricks type beat every single day, I'd get bored. And I've, I, I honestly think I would burn up. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that I'm always making completely different stuff, it just, it keeps me excited when I wake up in the morning. Like it also helps that Merck sends me a new song like every day. So <laughs> that that also helps but uh yeah i think that i i have a different creative process with every guy that i work with that's what keeps me going that's what keeps me excited you know and i think i think that's uh unique and and very um very special too because a lot of producers kind of just sit there and they're like you come to me for my sound you know what i mean right like, right from here doesn't really step outside of his box for anybody you know what i mean he might yeah like you like like you when he did that it, but yeah, yeah. Even when he, um, uh, even when he did that album with Christina Aguilera, like it was like a gangstar beat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yo, that's some of his hardest production, man. Yeah, yeah, that shit is yeah. Hard. I know that 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 actually is a really good album. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, beat. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> a, oh my yeah. god. Oh that was my a good god. album. <laughs> it is actually. It is. It is. It is. Um, I do want to go, uh, I, I know we kind of deviated, I want to go back, but I actually do want to, with just you mentioning Merck and how, how it's kind of caused you to um, work up, like, kind of work even more, you know, more consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I find it interesting because in that interview, you had just started working with Merck, right? Like, in, you were talking yeah. about, like, how you got just started doing your first songs together and stuff. And I thought it was really cool listening to that today. And I'm like, wow. And now look at it. It's like you're li literally his right hand man and the amount of stuff you guys pump out. You know what I mean? And at that time, like you're literally talking and you're like, yeah, like Snack just started stealth bomb. He told me, yo, you should work with the kid Mercules. So, you know, me and him started chatting and you're like DJ Premier, uh, you know, Eclipse just told me that Premier uh, liked Merc stuff. So I'm excited to put this record out with him. And like, I don't even think you guys had any songs out yet. And like now, now probably, probably not. I mean. Yeah, I know. It's, it's insane. Now look at it. Like, I mean, we have like over, um, we have probably like over like a hundred million views on YouTube, like all the songs we've done. Like I got a gold plaque on my wall from, uh, from way down that we did. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, it's just insane. Like, like how if it, if you told me like, I believed in Merck, when he was just like making when he was doing shows in front of 10 people like i was sending him beats when he wasn't even you know like i mean we weren't even doing business i was sending him beats because i just like knew i like i, I heard something in him that i just felt like was gonna just like blow up and i mean i'm really proud of that kid he's done really good it's incredible, man. It's incredible. And um, I would say you had good foresight. And uh, one thing a lot of people say too, right? You know, like a lot of producers will give advice to up and comers, but they'll say, you know, instead of trying to shop your beats and sell your beats to anybody you can and make quick bucks, like find one or two rappers you really believe in and just create with them. And that's how you're going to get your name out there. And I mean, your name was already out there, but I, I would have to say like you and Merck's work together has kind of, catapulted you to another level not like and you already had accolades out the ass prior to that you know what i mean but no, like, it has it it absolutely has like um yeah because i feel like 
I was still like kind of on the come up when I was working with, you know, cause like obviously Paz like put me on, like he was like, he found me, you know, like pretty much. So like, I, I always feel like I was working with like the legends. Like I was working with guys who were, who were doing this for 20 years. So like with Merck, I feel like we kind of like built together. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it, it, it's, it means a little bit more that I feel like we've, we've like both have earned our success, like, you know, together, we, we've just built it together, you know, like, cause Paz already, Paz had everything in the world. Like when I met him. So yeah, he was already, he already had like, in my opinion, some of the greatest albums ever before I even, before I even knew that I wanted to make beats. So, yeah. you know, and like Matt, I mean, like Mad Child, like swollen members are like, you know, like I'm not from Canada, but my wife's from Canada and she tells me all the time, like how like swollen members were just like massive in like the early two thousands. And so those guys were just like, like, you know, legends, like, so with Merck, it's like, I feel like I started working with him when he didn't have much. And then, and then we just kept, I kept sending him beats, sending him beats, sending him beats. And he just kept recording, recording, recording. And like, now you know now here we are we've done songs with bone thugs twista i mean the game i mean what the game <laughs> it's, hey, right? insane, it's insane and that being said too like before i do kind of go back in time again um would you that being said with you and Merck, like in the way you guys have kind of built and uh kind of kind of kind of built each other up simultaneously um do you think there would ever be a time now where you would actually because like you said you're like at the time you're like you know he was performing in front of 10 people so i'm assuming he probably wasn't buying beats from you you probably just believed in him more like yo we can create something great would you take that chance again now that you're so far in your career if you if you've seen somebody on the up and coming and they maybe didn't quite have really that much exposure but you you've seen the talent in them would you take that chance on another up and comer today oh absolutely absolutely i would uh you know, I would start by like sending, I would, I would start by sending whoever it was like a few beats because you'll be able to gauge like right away how hungry the kid is. First of all, yeah. if the kids, if the kid sits on the beats for, for, you know, like months or years, then you know that their, their work ethic, cause like work ethic is a huge thing with me. Like yeah. I can't work, I can't work with someone who does one song every three years. Yeah. So especially like a young kid, like if I'm sending you beats and like, you want to like, you know, like build something like I better be getting songs back. Like, you know, like every month or every other, you know, month or something, but I would definitely build with like a young kid who, who, who I believed in, who thought that, you know, who was like, you know, crazy talented or, or like something like that. I would, yeah, I would definitely, I haven't really, I haven't really built with anyone like that. Like, like a young kid or anything. Cause I'm just so focused on what I'm doing now. Yeah. But uh, with, with, with social media and everything, like you never, you never know who could DM me and be like, Hey, can you check out my music and stuff? So, and I do do that. Like when people DM me and there's like, can, can you check me out? Like I do, I don't just like, you know, I'm not Drake where I have 9 million messages. Like I can manage my DMS. <laughs> you so, know what? That's that's good for you though, man. Cause I'm not going to lie. I, myself, I don't need, like a lot of times someone shoots me a link in the inbox nine times out of 10. I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm more, yeah. about, I'm more, I myself am more about the discovery. Like if I come across it or it comes across my radar and it looks intriguing and I like it, then I'm gonna reach out and be like, yo, let's do an interview or like, yo, let me hook you some beats or, you know what I mean? Or like, just, just do anything that I can to potentially be like, you know, like, Either, or just say I fuck with what you're doing, you know what I mean? But so I, yeah, I, I yeah. commend you for that because that's um that takes a lot of time, man. Like I don't have damn near the amount of DMs you have, and it can be a task yeah. for me to get through mine, man. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, it, it's not. I'm not sitting here listening to someone's full EP, no. <laughs> but like if, if someone drops me like a song, because like I mean, you know, you kind of know right off the bat if yeah. if. Like, if like you should just delete it or you know if if you should be like yo pretty good man keep going or something you know what i mean so yeah yeah but yeah you know i mean it was different when like 
when I was coming up, like you couldn't really, it was kind of before Facebook, I mean, Instagram wasn't a thing. I mean, I met Paz on MySpace. So, I mean, what does that tell you? Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Man, I feel like a, I feel like a dinosaur saying MySpace. <laughs> Yo, I was so upset like a couple of years ago when uh, MySpace decided to delete all the music off of their profiles. Oh, so, did like, they? Yeah, they, they made an announcement. I think it was like two years ago or so. But, um, you know, I had like some of my first recordings on there. And, you know, I didn't bother downloading them and saving them to a hard drive because I'm like, ah, they're on MySpace. You know, you listen to them once every five years, right? And then they delete I know, them. I know. Damn. Damn, I'll never hear those again. No. <laughs> But so I do want to go back, though, you know, um, when you first started producing, what what was um, what was the first part of what was the first piece of equipment you started making beats with? Um, man, I think it was just like a cracked version of FL Studio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had like a I think it was like I think it was like FL Studio six or like or like seven. Oh, and, wow. Uh, I just had like a because I started when I was in. I started when I was in college, so I had like a laptop and then um, I just had a, a pair of headphones and a cracked FL studio that I, I didn't have a keyboard, no MPC, nothing. Like I would just, I would just, the beats from, from season of the assassin, I made by, by tapping the actual keyboard on my, on my laptop, <laughs> like, like this, actually one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it was just that man i was just i and i uh um till this day i still use fl studio because i'm just like i'm just comfortable with it you know what i mean yeah so but now you just have hardware that you with it yeah I, I have the um the machine micro i don't know where it is it it's it, it's in here somewhere but i i got the machine micro I use, um, I don't know if you've heard of Contact. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where I get most of my sounds from. Well, actually, that's where I get all my sounds from. And, um, and I, have a, I have a little um, a little USB. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. That's all you need, man. You don't need the big 82 key or whatever that is. No. You just need to be able to, you know. Hey, so you want you – you know, you all know something, you're going to find this hilarious. But to this day, I've been making beats since, well, I started making beats in high school on, uh, in communications class on GarageBand there. And then um, okay. I got Ableton in 2009, I got Ableton and I've been using it ever since. And to this day, you want to know how I make beats still, bro? I cut and paste. I'm a cut and paste producer. I'll cut a snare off of a, of a song, I'll cut a drum, like, and I build. I literally build it by dragging and clicking and, and creating. And I still, to this day, it's what I'm most comfortable with. Like, Yeah, you just, you just said it right there, what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what I'm comfortable with FL Studio. That's why I, I'm not going to sit here and try to learn Pro Tools or something. Or like, uh, like, or Ableton, you know, like I'd be going backwards. I'd be trying to yeah. teach myself, you know, and I'm all about learning new things, but I'll, I'll learn new things in, in my comfortable zone of like, you know, how I work. Yeah. So garage band, man, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that, shit, that shit really just taught me the, like, just taught me how to sample, you know what I mean? Cause you couldn't really yeah. do much with it. Like you, you literally no. you got a drum break and you had to find a sample that fit that drum break. You couldn't, you couldn't warp things and you couldn't manipulate shit. You know what I mean? Like, it no, was no, you couldn't do anything. No, no, it was bare bones. So like you yeah. had to like literally go through samples for like an hour to find that one that actually fit the beat. Maybe put a splice, couple splices in it and you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it taught me the fundamentals I needed. And, you know, since I learned that way, when I ended up getting programs, like I have a 49 key keyboard. I got a, I got an Akai, um, you know, the, the mini keyboard with the pads. I got the, uh, I got the longer keyboard, but I, I hardly use the shits. I just, you know, like when you find something you're comfortable with, if you make it work, it's like, you can just build on top of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. 
But, um, you know, and uh, so I did want to ask too, like, um, you said you met Paz on MySpace. So I guess that kind of answered the question a little bit, but like, how did like you and Paz really start like working together? Like how, like, how did you meet him on MySpace? Like, how did that all kind of transpire? So, so I was doing beats for, do you know, do you know Dope Nixon? He was in of AOTP. Course. Of course, yeah. So he was, he was like, like one of the members in AOTP. And um, I started sending beats to him through like on MySpace, I I found the, like guys in AOTP because I was like because I was like I'm not gonna be able to send the message directly to Paz. He's never gonna see it. So I don't really remember how MySpace worked, but I just remember sending Dope Nixon a message, being like, uh, "Hey, can I send you beats?" Because I remember really liking. Um, I think the album was called Sour Diesel. Uh, I don't know what year that came out, maybe like 2008 or something. But um, I just remember really liking that album. So I, I, I uh, hit him up for beats and I just sent him a few. And then I'll never forget it. I, I woke up in my college dorm room. I checked my, my like university email and in bold letters, it just said Vinny Paz. And what? he was like, he was like, hey, what up, man? It's it's Vinny Paz. I'm working on my first solo album. Can can you send some beats? Just send them here. Dude, I'm I'm not even kidding. The first beats I sent him was was Pistolvania, which was on which was on Season of the Assassin, and uh Kill 'em All, which was which which uh, featured Beanie Seal. <laughs> Those so, are the first beats you sent him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I think there was just that instant, like, connection right there. Because, like, you know, he he obviously heard my beats through the ones that I sent Dope Nixon. So he knew that I wasn't just some, you know, some, like, random, some kid with just, like, you know, crappy beats. But, uh, yeah, I I sent him those. But... I, I like till this day, I still think the cool thing is that he reached out to me. Like, like, just think I was a fan of JMT growing up. Like one of the main reasons why I got into making beats is because of Stoop. So having him reach out to me and I'm just some, like, I was like, I think I was maybe 20. I think I was 20 years old and I was in, I was in college. So it was just like insane. Like, I remember calling my best friend from back home being like, guess who just emailed me? <laughs> That's incredible, man. Yeah, it's a really cool story, huh? I'll have to write a book one day and put that in there. <laughs> no, for real, for real. And actually, yeah. with you bringing up Dope Nixon, too, um, there's, there, there's something I want to add. This is jumping forward a bit kind of to present times, um, and we'll go back again. But I'm just curious, like, with being a producer, I find that sometimes producers get put in, um, you know, weird positions, like, you know, with Jay-Z and Nas, like with Kanye producing Takeover, right? Like, I remember Kanye saying in interviews after the fact, he's like, yo, Nas was my favorite rapper. Like, I, he was my favorite yeah. over Jay-Z, and Jay-Z kissed him on my beat, and now it's like, am I ever going to work with Nas? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. um, and that's one thing I want to ask you about, because, I mean, there's been some beefs that have ha transpired in time since, but in, you've had good working relationships with people on both sides. Like yeah, you mentioned Dope Nixon and then him and Paz have had a fallout. Um, you know, I don't know if you ever worked with King Magnetic, but you know, same type of thing, AOTP. Like, and then um, to go forward too, like with the Mad Child thing, you, you, you've created hit records with Mad Child and then you've created so many hit records with um, Stomp Down Killer Associated Artists. Um, like, does that put you in a weird position when, when these, you know, these parties end up rivaling with each other and you have good relationships on both sides, like, do you ever feel like kind of stuck in the middle, like you're forced to pick a side? Um, when it comes with the, when it comes to the past stuff, no, because it's always, it's always just, I'm on Paz's side. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've, I've never really, I've never really been friends with anyone in AOTP. So, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm friendly with them. You know, like if we, like if I see him at a show, it's, you know, it's all love, but yeah. 
like, I mean, me and Paz talk every single day. Like, you know, he's one of like my closest friends. So yeah. when for that situation, nah, it didn't really get weird for me. Cause it's always just been, I'm just, I'm just cool with Paz. But, um, the, the mad child and snack thing, like it got a little weird, but like, like, like not to the point where I had to, you know, like not to the point where it made me uncomfortable. Like I kind of, I kind of stayed out of that situation. Like it was between them. Yeah. So I never really got involved. And uh, there was actually a, there was actually a time where I wasn't really doing much stuff with Mad Child that I was, I was constantly working with Snack. So that kind of made the situation a little bit easier too. But also, also when Snack released those disc records, all three of them were on my beats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that kind of, but I've never had any sort of, I've never had any sort of like aggressive conversations with Mad Child. Like it's always kind of been, it's always been cool. Like I've never, I think he's also kind of like a misunderstood guy. Like I feel like, I'll, I feel like a lot of people don't like him, but they don't really know. Him. Yeah. So I, I've never really had issues with him, man. Like, you know, like I, I'm, I mean, he's cool to me. Like I've never, never had, I like, I also pride myself on like, I feel like I personally don't have issues with like anybody. Like I just don't, I just like, I'm pretty like laid back. I don't, I don't ever get in like heated arguments with anybody. I mean, I pretty much just get along with anybody. And like, I also keep my circle kind of small. So it's like, I talk to Paz every day, you know, like I talk to Mark, you know, I talk to snack and then that's pretty much it. I don't really deal with any, I don't really deal with that many people. Like, like you think I produce for a lot of people, but uh, like a lot of the stuff is just that I'll send him a beat. And then like, I don't really talk to them after that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So I try to, you know, I try to just stay out of all that stuff, especially with social media. Now I feel like everybody's always beefing. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you know, like this guy hasn't liked my photos in a month. What? Like he doesn't like me anymore. You know, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like it's, it's just, I try to just stay out of it, man. I wake up, work on my stuff. I send the beats out and then, you know, like that's mind, it. Just mind your business. Yeah. 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 Like La Coconos for mind your business. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> primo. Primo. Actually, my boy, uh, my boy Tom shot that video for them. Real Wolf. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's a, man, that was a good record when it came out. Oh, man. That shit's hard. That shit's hard, man. Um, yeah. And with you mentioning too, like how tight um are with Paz and Merck. They've never worked together though, have they? No, no, they've never worked together. No. You gotta set that, that up. Man. See, that's like another that's like another thing that I stay out of. I don't I don't really be like, yo, you gotta do a song with this guy. Like, you know, those guys can make their own decisions. I don't really uh, you know, like like again, I stay out of it. Yeah. I don't even you know, that's just me, man. I just like it, like it, like if these guys want to work together, they can. But and obviously, I'll 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 make the beat. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, like you know, that's up to them. I don't. I like I I, I like I kind of like having those like separate worlds. You know what I mean? Because uh, I just like having like I feel like I'm kind of like a bipolar producer because the stuff I do for for Merck is like you know it's just, it's just different. Like, so I, you know, I like keeping stuff separate, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. These guys can work with whoever I want, but I just, you know, just whenever they call me for a beat, I'm ready. Yeah. You let them yeah. dictate, uh, who, who's, who they, who they, uh, work with and all that. Yeah. 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 That being said, one of the coolest collabs that has recently came out was Ritz and Paz together. Yeah, which, I've seen that. which I, which I feel like was a cool collab because fans have been asking me for that forever. Like, yeah. when is what you know when's Ritz and Pads gonna do a song together? And then I feel like it was a cool song because people weren't expecting that beat for for Ritz. Um, so I feel like that was a cool collab. Yeah, you've been, you got a lot of collabs though man like even just with Merck alone uh, some of the collaborations you guys have done it's like holy shit man 
I know, I know. Some of those are just like, like things I never would have even, you know, dreamed about doing. Like I, uh, you know, like I grew up in that, in that, you know, late nineties, early two thousands era. And like the game was one of my favorite like rappers. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. documentary is one of the best albums. Like I love, you know, G unit. I love all those guys. Like, you know what I mean? So that's just like, I, had, I don't know. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's incredible, man. And, and like for you to be able, you know, I mean, I guess a lot of people work their whole careers to work up to working with legends. But I mean, you kind of like right off the gate has hit you up. So it's like at a certain point, you become desensitized to it almost. Yeah, like, like I was like super excited when like Mark was like, yo, Bone Thugs is going to be on the beat. So like there's like certain ones that get me excited. Like now, like, you know, I've been doing this for, for like 13 years, 12 years now. But um, yeah, like working with Paz now is like, you know, I still have to like pinch myself being like, I'm, I'm working with the front man of JMT, like, uh, you know, or, or I'm working with him and Scoop at the same time. I'm like, I'm working with JMT. Like, this yeah. is like, like now it's more so like, they're my friends. So I don't look at it as like, you know, these guys are legends but like in my mind i know they are so yeah but like with like the merc situation like i don't personally know bone thugs i don't i don't personally know twista but you know we all listen to overnight celebrity so you know like yeah. i mean i mean right i mean kanye beat but uh that's just like you know when 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 he hit me with like the game too like, I was just like, you know, you know, like I have to ask him, like, are you serious? You know, like, you're not messing with me. <laughs> well, you know, but, it's game, uh, right. And it's kind of a full circle moment, I guess, because, you know, like the game was Dr. Dre's protege at a certain point. Like he was rapping on Dr. Dre beats, like someone who Dr. Dre brought into the game has rapped on one of your beats. It's kind of like a and, full circle thing. And what even makes that more full circle? is that he mentions Dre on my beat. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does, yeah. Yeah, he does. Like, that, like, that's what makes it even more crazy. You know what I mean? So, man. When you yeah. were young, did you used to, like, put posters up on your wall of, like, these dudes, like, Dre and Game and stuff? And be like, no. yeah, I'm going to work with him one day. Like, did you, my, did you speak it into existence? No, I'll tell you, my answer to that is no, because... I wasn't even thinking about being a producer. Like when I was listening to that music and stuff, I started making beats in college just because I was bored. Like, and then I started really like, like getting into it. And then, and then I would go back and study the albums that like I listened to as a kid and, and, and like really study, like, like that's when I started to learn like, Oh, okay. This stuff on the chronic is a sample. Like what's a sample. And then yeah. I would like, you know, then, I, then like, because back when we were kids, like there wasn't no YouTube, you couldn't look up Dr. Dre samples. No. Right. No. So then I started looking on YouTube, like, Oh, wait a minute. That melody in, in, in forgot about Dre is, is actually in a song from the seventies. Yeah. So then I'd like, so then I'd start listening to that stuff. And then I started teaching myself like how to sample and stuff. So, but like, no, but no, when I was a kid, I wasn't going to be like, I'm going to work with, you know, D12 or something. Like, I didn't, I didn't say that because I didn't, I didn't know that I wanted to make beats. Um, but yeah, your, your question, like, did I have stuff on my wall? My, my old, my old room had all the, every single guy from D12, <laughs> um, all the artwork from um, Jay Z's Reasonable Doubt album. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think Marshall Mathers LP, Slim Shady LP, uh, G Unit Fifty, Get Rich or Die Trying was all on my on my wall. So yeah, like oh, I and I think I even had like Fabulous. F A B U S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like um, the little Mo superhero, what a superwoman days and shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's like the that's the beginning of fabulous back then. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. 
Um, and actually, uh, one, one thing you did uh, mention, too, that um, I was curious about, because I know you and uh, Stoop have co-produced quite a bit together over the years. Yeah. What, what's the process like when you two um, co-produce together? Like, do you guys actually get in the studio together, or do, does somebody send one guy the idea and you build on it? Or So that whole process revolves around Taz. I'll, uh, he'll, he'll get like a folder of, let's just say like 15 of my beats. He'll like, he'll, he'll, he'll send them to Stoop, see which ones he likes. And then they'll like, he'll either cut vocals on it and then I'll send all the files to Stoop and then he will, you know, redo the drums. He'll, he'll, he, like, like we've had some songs where like Stoop will sample me. Like he'll, he'll take my beat and then like kind of reproduce it. Like he'll put, he'll put his stoop magic on it. You know, he'll, he'll do the drums. He'll, he'll add a sample on top of my beat. That's the same key. Like that, that only like some insane person would do, which, which like he is like, he's, he's like completely on another level than other, than other people. Like when people ask me about stoop, the best way to, to describe him is you could play a sample for a hundred producers. He'll sample a part that 99 other producers don't hear. Yeah. And you'll just be like, wait a minute, that wasn't in that song. And then he'll like slow it down and be like, see, there it is right there. And in you, your ear would not catch that. Yeah. Like he, he will just take a sample that you will, you'll pass on. Right. Like you'll just be like, nah, that's not gonna be good, and he'll just turn it into something. It's it's completely insane. <laughs> that's beautiful, though, man. That's my favorite thing, actually. Sampling. It's like, and I find you know you can't do it with every beat. I mean, somebody like Stoop can. Um, you know, someone like myself, you can't do it with every beat. You know, like sometimes no. you just find a sample that's too perfect. It's like you almost can't manipulate it too much, or you ruin the magic of the sample, right? Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. My favorite thing when you can find like a little one second piece, and then a minute and a half in the song, find a two second piece, and then a little gap between the guys singing and three and a half minutes, and you chop those together and create your own melody with it, and like nobody could ever pick out the sample. Like I've no, sampled Dean, no. played that for like twenty people. Like I, I sampled "We Are the Champions" by Queen, and I just played that beat for 50, 20 people including my parents people who know that song i'm like yo what's that sample i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know i'm like <laughs> play it for them and they're like what the fuck were you think like you know what i yeah, mean yeah yeah like, yeah 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 you know that's it's, what it, it's great when you can do it but like you know i find it, it it they're far and few between you know what i mean when you can create that kind of magic but there's no, also no. those yeah but there's also those samples that like you hear it and it's just like you just gotta loop that yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, just loop it. Don't even touch it. <laughs> yeah, once you start chopping it, you just ruin it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that, you know? That's the most so. beautiful thing in sampling, man. It's like, um, you know, you know my steez by Gangstar. Like, I'm like, oh, how did Primo do that? Or like, um, what is it? No, you know what the, uh, you know what the best Primo one is? Full clip. Full clip. Yeah, man. That's the next one I was gonna mention. Look up like. <laughs> For anyone who watches this interview, look up that sample on YouTube and you'll have you'll have no idea. <laughs> you almost can't even hear it. You know what I mean? No, it's like no, you, you can't. separated like the three notes and like played them in reverse and like you're like, yeah, what? it's what? insane. What? Even if you look up Shook Ones, uh it's on YouTube somewhere, the, the Shook Ones part two. Never and then there's like a like somebody made a video of the sample and then what um uh, Havoc did. Yeah. And it's the same, it's the same thing where like he took like that like piano and slowed it. He would like he would he would twitch. I mean, I mean he would tweak certain keys of it. Yeah. Like it insane. It's that Herbie <laughs> Hancock sample. And yeah, you know, yeah. You know, you know another cool thing about the Shook Ones beat? I mean, you probably know it as being, you know, a beat fanatic, probably, but um the hi-hat is actually he sampled um the um the stovetop in the Queensbridge project buildings like they had the old oh, really? stovetops and the click if you listen to yeah. the hi-hat and the beat it's the stovetop clicking when you turn on the gas oh wow no I didn't know that 
That's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. That beat, that beat, that that's that's one of those beats that's like, oh. hey, you know, know, we, know. We, we can talk sampling and production forever, but um, I know. Um, I did want to move as I, I I was curious about the stew process, but another thing I was curious about too, like I'm kind of familiar with how um you and Mad Child clicked up, you know, like um. I know um, you, you had talked about it in the Underground Vault interview. So if anybody's watching this, I mean, they can get the story there. I don't want to rehash everything that you've already talked about. But one thing I was curious about, like, how did the connection initially with you and Snack kind of happen? Like, did that happen through your connection with Swollen or was that just completely separate and organic? No, that was, uh, I want to say Mad Child, like, tweeted both of us, like, I. I think he was like snack meet C Lance, C Lance meets snack. Now, now go make music. I'm pretty sure he tweeted that. Like it was like that. And then um, also we did that song Fear. Yeah. It was like swollen members featuring snack. I think that was the very first beat that snack ever rapped on of mine. Or maybe we worked together before that, but I don't, I don't think so. But um, yeah, it was through match out. Like he connected us on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> And then, it, and then it ended up being funny that they didn't like each other after that. <laughs> right? I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was funny. You know, and um, yeah, I, I don't know. Their business isn't any of my business. So, I mean, I don't really want to elaborate on it too much. But I always found it odd, that beef, because to me, I became familiar to Snack through that collaboration with Swollen Members. Like, so to me, on the outside looking in, it was kind of like, to me, it was like, yo, like Mad Child kind of put you on you know what i mean i wouldn't say put a monk snack put in years of work prior to that but you know what i mean like from where i was in ontario that was my entry point to snack so when they had that feud i was kind of like as but entertaining like, as it yeah, was i almost yeah. wish it didn't have to happen you know what i mean yeah no I, no I know what you mean but like you um you know so i like i told you i didn't grow up in canada but like like you did so so like I'm gonna ask you a question. There's right. no way that there's no way that any artist in Canada, like Snack included, Merck, you know, Junk, all these like all these guys, there's no way that they can sit there and say that they weren't at one point a fan of Swollen Members. Yeah, no, I I don't think so. Like even you know even me, I'm one of the most critical bastards you'll ever meet. Like you know like um when it comes to like you know bar work and stuff. You know I mean I was one of those guys in high school that sat around and listened to rap records I liked, and you overanalyzed every line. You're like, yo, that didn't make sense. And you know what I mean? Like I was yeah, one of those yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I was honestly yeah. one of those pricks. Um, and I can even say like you know even if as much as we might have overanalyzed some swollen members music growing up, I was I was a fan. You know what I mean? So if I can say that, I, I don't think there's too many rappers in Canada. I think, yeah, I mean, I think that everyone was probably influenced by him, right? Because he was kind of, like, was he kind of the first Canadian, uh, like, rapper to really become successful? Um, I wouldn't say that. I mean, like, we got a lot of history. My show Fresh West is like, to me, this is how I label it. I say my show Fresh West is the rack him of Canada. He's the godfather. Um, and then in the 90s, you had a lot of you had a lot of dudes like from the Toronto scene who were making noise like the uh, the circle, which was Cardinal Official, Shaq Claire, Socrates. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like Rodala, Danio, like they're all kind of all kind of affiliated. You know what I mean? And I'm missing a bunch of names out of there, but that just gives you kind of a lump idea of um that kind of camp. Um, and they made a lot of moves. You know what I mean? Like um. You, well, you know, obviously Cardi, you know, and went on to do the Akon stuff. But I mean, even in the 90s, like they were getting a lot of nods from the States. Um, but I mean, Swollen members were kind of like their own thing. And I mean, it probably benefited them to a degree that they had the little short white guy mad child because Canada, as you know, is a lot of small cities sprawled out like it's not like the states where you know there's a lot of overpopulated there's you know there's not a whole lot of free land for people to develop on like canada what is it i think 70 percent of our country is uninhibited yeah it's, yeah it's just it's nature you know what i mean yeah. so it's like a yeah. lot of sprawled out little cities and a lot of those small cities are majority white you know what i mean a lot of them um right. so i think for that reason 
Swollen Members was able to penetrate a lot of markets that maybe a lot of the, the, the pioneers prior to them weren't quite able to penetrate quite as easily. But, um, yeah. but um, you know, we had a lot of success stories prior Swollen Members to degree. But Swollen Members, I think, um, probably one of the biggest cult followings out of Canada probably prior to, you know, what you're seeing now with like Mercules and the, the kind of the stomp down legacy. Um, I would say the, the closest thing we've ever really had to that prior would have been definitely swollen to the, mo- yeah, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Cause like, cause obviously I didn't really get to see their success. Like yeah. Um, in Boston, I mean, I don't, you know, like no, no, like disrespect to, to swollen members, but like in in Boston, growing up, like I didn't, I I never heard of them. I mean, yeah. all all my friends were were hip hop fans. I I just never heard of them. So, Actually, but I mean, obviously, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was gonna say, like, obviously, they had a ton of success. So, yeah, and that's but, the thing, right? It's hard for Canada and the United States, but actually. One thing I want to ask you as well, too, like it's, this isn't part of my notes, but just with you coming up in Boston, um, have you ever worked with that OG? I never did. No, 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 never did. I've worked with obviously esoteric slain. Yeah. Uh, terminology. Yeah. Um, I was trying to get Big Shug on my album, but that, yeah, I know. Right. That'd be crazy. It just didn't like the timing didn't work out. But uh, I got the first from Shug I've been sitting on for like five years, actually. <laughs> you got to put that out. <laughs> uh, we, I, we, anyways, you know, in politics, you know, people, different people involved, um, you know, we just haven't been able to hash it out properly, but we do plan on putting that out eventually. But no, nah, it's yeah. just ironic you said that, though. But Big Shug, yeah, that's a legend right there, man. Yeah. I do want to cover, obviously, because um, you've uh, been pumping out a ton of material this year. Um, you're doing an album every month that samples only samples from specific countries. Yeah, yeah. I love this idea. Um, tell me a little bit about this, like the process. Like the only thing I've ever really seen like this. Um, I know Madlib did a, a couple special editions of like the medicine show where he did um you know, a couple segregated areas and specific samples and stuff, but I've never really seen anything quite to the degree of like what you're doing. And like, I really like the way that you branded them and the artwork you've done to represent them and the titles, the way that you title them is uh, incredibly creative. Like what was kind of the thought process behind doing, doing something so creative and original? So what started was, I just like, I landed on like a gold mine of like Japanese samples, just like, uh, just like a bunch of like, um, you know, stuff that's, that sounded like um, black helicopters, um, you know, nonfiction. So I started just making a bunch of beats with, with Japanese samples. And I put out that that album, the ghost of Mount Fuji um, in 2020, I put that out. And that was like my that was like my first big instrumental release. And um, it just like, it just did really well. Like I didn't even know that there was really a fan base out there for instrumental albums because, you know, I feel like, I feel like you and I and like other producers, you know, like that stuff, but I didn't, I didn't think the casual fan would like listen to that. So I put that out there. I sold out of the merch in like two days. And then I was like, man, maybe I got something here with these, with like a, a country themed instrumental album. So then I, I announced that I was going to be doing um, one every month of a, of a different country. And I asked like, I asked the fans, what countries do you want to see? And um, I just like the, the support was like, just like way more than I expected. Like, I was like, oh, okay, they're actually interested in this. So, because I know, like, as a fan, I would love if, like, if, like, Alchemist did, you know, something like that. Like, I'd be listening every month. So, I, I started in, in January of 2021. I, I started, I did another Japanese album because I just had so many Japanese beats. <laughs> so, uh, 
And they're not necessarily beats that many of the guys I work with now like would rap on. Like, it's, yeah, they're they're kind of more so for like listening pleasure, you know. Like, I get a lot of people who who hit me up and they say that they listen to my music when they're studying, like when they're studying like schoolwork, which yeah. is which is kind of interesting to me. But um, or I'll get a lot of people who say that they put it on when they meditate and. You know, so it's not necessarily for rappers, these albums that I put out, but um, yeah, so I started with, with, with Japan in 2021. And then it's just like, one thing that's really cool about doing these albums is, is I'm learning stuff. So it's kind of like, it's kind of cool for me. I'm learning stuff about each country. Like I learned about like, um, you know, certain like, like landmarks in Japan, certain certain like tourist attractions in in um in france like you know it's like just i'm learning stuff i'm learning like the language too because i because i do a lot of um research on each country while i'm working on it because like because like you mentioned the titles are yeah are 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 really um themed to that uh, specific country so and what's even more cool about when i announced the whole thing is that I had one album done out of the next 11 months. So I've been kind of working, I've been kind of working on it as the, you know, like it, it, it'll like trigger in my head, like, man, I got to get next album. I got to get next month's album done, <laughs> you know? So it kind of like, uh, but also it, 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 it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me working like every, you know, every single day, like, um, Pressure builds diamonds, right? Yeah. So I just dropped, I think it was last week or the week before, uh, Bulgaria. Yeah. And then next month, I haven't announced it yet, but I'll I'll say it in here. It's gonna be Africa. Ooh, and, shit. Yeah. And and I'll 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 tell you right now, it was the most difficult one. Really? Yeah, because there ain't there ain't many African samples out there. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess right. Yeah, not probably not a huge music actual industry. Out not there. not based off of like, because also I'm trying to make good beats too. Like yeah. I'm not just trying to I'm not just trying to take any sample and you know, I'm like when I'm making these beats, I I do make them in mind of like, would you know would Paz pick this? So. I'm not just trying to make like, you know, half-ass beats. So yeah. Um Africa was really difficult. It was it was one of the most difficult ones. And then the country after that, I'm not gonna say what it was, but I had I have like 20 beats that I made for it because it was just every song was a sample. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's incredible, man. I love the idea though. I think it's super innovative. Um and it's just cool, man. Like, because one thing I think that has kind of been lost, it's like you said, like, I think a, a lot of like Alchemist, you know, stays putting out beat tapes and stuff. But, you know, a lot of th there's not a whole lot in that market anymore of just beat tapes. And I think one thing I don't I think, think so. is cool is is a theme like any like, you know what I mean? Like, like and this is no disrespect to the late great, you know. But like Jay Dilla beat tapes, right? I know they're they're incredibly renowned by some people, but myself, I never really got that into them because a lot of them felt like just kind of a mix. Like it, there wasn't so much of a cohesiveness to the listening experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, and I, almost I agree. Like, I wanted to hear like Common come in on this one and Black Dot come in on this one and, you know, Elzai come in on this. Or, you know what I mean? Like, like. Like, it's like, you can almost hear like, oh, this almost sounds like it was, could have been made for Busta or like, you know what I mean? But like, it's, yeah. it's kind of sporadic and which I guess kind of, you know, is, it is what it is. And that's kind of, I guess, part of the listening experience for those. Like, that's what it's supposed to be. But I like the idea and the way that you've kind of curated, you know, these concepts and what better way to do it than by region? Cause you, you know, better than I do, you know, regions all have a sound it's like the way that hip-hop in the states you know what i mean like 
you know, New York had a sound, but Philly had a sound and, and, you know, LA had a sound and the South had a sound. And even though there might be, you know, bits and pieces that overlap in all of these sounds, you know, Miami had its own sound, you know what I mean? But like even regions in one country have their own sound. So to go internationally, what better way to make cohesive pieces of art, you know what I mean? Than to drop yeah. specific places. Like I just, and, it's a great idea. I love it. And I'm um, uh... I'm specifically picking countries that not necessarily will have any sort of like the same sound, like how I did Japan. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't do China too, because it's kind of like the similar like instruments, you know, because one cool thing about this whole thing is that different countries have a lot of different instruments. Like, yeah, like, like, you know, that vintage Japanese sound, whatever that, whatever that instrument is that they use like i don't even know what it is but like you know what i'm talking about i do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's like you know it's like, so it like almost sounds like a flute meets a guitar yeah right right that's what I'm, <laughs> yeah i i don't know what it is a harp or something i don't know yeah <laughs> but uh yeah that's the one cool thing and just like the thing that really made me motivated about it too is like um the fans just like like they enjoy it so yeah. you know like not like not all fans will be really into like you know the history of each country and like the work i put into title each song like i understand like the casual 2021 fan doesn't even you know they'll just listen to it and then put on another album in two seconds but you know i i put a lot of time into the the history of of each country and each title of the beat so, you know, like even for me, like it, like it's a lot of fun. And for someone that makes beats every day, like I said earlier in their interview, like I have to, I have to find ways to keep it fun for me, like to keep me, you know, motivated to have fun every day to do it. So yeah. these, these monthly albums have been that, like it's made, it's made like, it's given me a lot of like, you know, fun into making beats. And it forces you to step outside your comfort zone too, right? Which I mean, you know, as we were discussing earlier, somebody like yourself, you're no stranger to stepping outside of your comfort zone already, but it's just a whole nother new way to do it. You know what I mean? And all the stuff you're yeah. doing along the process, those are all tools that you're going to have in the kit for later, you know, when doing more future production. Like, you know, I, I love the idea. I love the way, you know, as a creative, like I can see from a creative perspective how, how it could be fun and how it could build your repertoire for moving forward. But I can also, from a fan perspective and as, you know, a connoisseur of art, really appreciate the work and the time you put into not only creating it, but like you said, researching so you can title the beats and the album titles and the artwork that, 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 that goes into it. It's like each one is its own artistic piece. And I think that is, I think it's just, I think that that part alone is just, you know, it's really, really impressive. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just happy that people are, are enjoying it. Cause like I said, it's, it's a, it's a lot of time and effort that I've put into, you know, researching it. So yeah, I mean, it's really cool. Now I know you don't want to expose on um, what countries you, you have coming uh, after Africa, but I'm just going to say this. I don't, I don't want you to elaborate on if it's coming or not. I just got to get this off, but I hope you do Ireland. What, uh, what country? Ireland. Uh, I, I mean, we have what, we have what, four or five months left. What it, yeah. Until, until next January. And who knows, I might even do it in 2022 because there's, be there's just, there's just so many countries, but, um, one idea that I do have, and it's, it's, um, it, it has nothing to do with the country albums is, uh, I put a post on my Facebook, maybe like, um, uh, like a month or two ago. And I was like, would you guys be interested in, an, in a retro uh, video game instrumental album? I seen that. And, that. and like, I had like a thousand comments of just like, yo, sample this game, sample this game. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm doing this. <laughs> no, that's a dope idea, man. And, um, you know, and I, and I hate to relate things to me continuously. Um, I don't like doing that in an interview, but just the, the fact that you said it, I have to bring it up is, um, damn near eight years ago but on one of my older albums somebody uh gave me a beat 
And um, still to this day, it's one of my favorite beats I rapped on, even though it's not that intricately done. It's just what they sampled. And they sampled the, the, the NES Nightmare on Elm Street. 16 bit. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, bro. You know what I mean? But like just the nostalgia you get when you hear a beat that you're like, yo, I used to hear that. 24 hours a day you know what i mean when you're a kid and you're playing that and that just loops in your head over and over and over again it's like when you hear that stuff brought back to life in an instrumental piece it's like that that is so cool so i love that idea man yeah i think i think a lot of fans will will uh will enjoy that because it'll it'll bring them back to like when they were with their brother playing a game in in, in 1989 you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so and there's so yeah, many yeah. of them, too. There's so many cool, like, you know, like those little 16-bit instrumentals. Like, there, there's so many that actually are cool and catchy. You know what I mean? And yeah. Like, yeah. Like, uh, like um, Sega Genesis. Like, and, and now with YouTube, like, you can just type in, like, you know, Super Nintendo soundtrack and just, like, millions of games come up. So yeah. it's, like, it's just so easy to find that stuff now. Yeah, you, you, know don't I mean? even, you don't even have to rig up the fucking system to your MP or nothing. You can literally... No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, work, so. the hard part's done for you. You just gotta, you just gotta be creative. Yeah, right, right. So, no, yeah, no. that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to doing that. And I might do, like, a, depending on if I have time, I might do some sort of, like, Halloween uh, instrumental. I'm not sure yet, but I might, I might start one. That'd be cool too. That'd be really cool. I like that though. I like the idea of doing beat tapes and then beat you know, that's I think that's really, really dope. And I as long as you keep putting them out, I'll be here to listen to them, man. Cause I love that idea. I love that concept. And I think yeah. the thing that's cool about beat tapes too is it is like you said, like I don't know if I'd meditate to a beat tape, you know what I mean? And you know, homework, you know, that that's more my podcast, you know, listen to podcasts, but like beat tapes are just great for when you're just like walking around the street you know what i mean and you're just like you know what i mean like it's just they, they put you in a zone you know what i mean like yeah yeah like and and i and I, I think not enough people really cater to that you know what i mean like you don't always want to be listening to music about i'm gonna be punching someone in the face or i'm gonna be doing this or you know songs specifically invoke so much emotion just by the lyrics but Right. Just instrumental, you know what I mean? It, it kind of, it leaves the palette open for whatever you might be doing while you're listening to it. You know what I mean? And that's one thing I think is really cool about it as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like I said, I, I wish, I wish more producers did them. Like, yeah. I, I kind of feel like it's like a lost art. Like, you know, beat t I know Evidence uh, recently dropped one. Um, and, and Alchemist does still do it. Like, uh, I think he just did Rapper's Best Friend 6 or something. I think it just came out. I, yeah, I think you're right, yeah. I, I haven't even heard it, but I got to check that out. All right, be careful. You listen to it, then you'll be making Alchemist beats for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's true, it's true. I'll start, I'll start, I'll start making Alchemist beats, and then, yeah, I'll have to go back to my own stuff after that. <laughs> and, um, you know, and the, the, the talking about albums and stuff the the main event thing that i've been waiting and dying to talk for you know i try to go as chronological as possible when i do it yeah yeah um but i know you got the uh, upcoming album you've been spending a lot of blood sweat and tears put into uh, so i know you got uh one of the home team camps on there lunch from poet shout out to stitch lotus philly um i believe that they're on you got a joint with them right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought so. Okay, and then I know you got junk on there and stuff, and um, and I I'd seen the track posted, and I couldn't find it prior to the interview. So I'm unfortunately I'm not gonna be as nerdy as I'd like to be and be able to go song for song and talk about it with you. But I do want to talk about it. So could you share a little bit about um the album and some of the some of the collaborations you put together for it that you're most excited about? Ah, uh, yeah, man. So. I kind of started this album. It was it was the February before COVID hit. So so COVID hit in March of yeah. of of 2020 and I start I started just emailing everyone that I've worked with being like, "Hey, I'm putting this album together. I would love for you to be a part of it." That was in February. Uh COVID hit and that kind of 
you know, a lot of these guys don't have studios just in their bedroom. So, you know, a lot of guys' studios closed down. That's why it's taken me so long. So, like, I didn't get a verse from a lot of guys for almost a year because they couldn't record. Like, they just don't have studios in their house. Yeah. And I, like, like I respect it. A lot of guys were like, I could set up, you know, like something on my laptop, but it's not going to sound good. So I was like, oh, just wait. So, so that's like how it started. But man, I mean, it's, I mean, should I just list them off? I'm not gonna, I'll probably forget people because it's like, there's, there's just so many people. But There's a ton of names, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it I is. Find it though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Paz, Ill Bill, Ari the Rugged Man, Chris Webby, Merck, Snack. Uh, Mad Child, Sick Jack, and Murs, uh, Big Twins, Evidence, um, Esoteric, Slain, Terminology, Self Titled, Apathy, uh, Junk. Um, geez, I don't even, I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm getting anxiety just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's just like way too many people. Ritz, uh, Cryptic Wisdom um it's just like uh reef the lost cause black poet um, oh yeah you got black poet on there i forgot yeah. about that man <laughs> so i mentioned i mentioned big suge earlier because i wanted the song to be black poet and uh big suge but oh, yeah man. because uh do you know do you know that now i mean this is a change of uh of subject but it's it's one of the main reasons why i wanted black poet on my album the album that the full album he did with primo oh yeah you ain't nothing changed is my one of my favorite primo beats uh that's probably that's probably one of my favorite albums like yeah the, the, the beats print. on that the black print right yeah 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 i have the instrumental version on vinyl yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that's one of the best man i was like i gotta get this guy on my album so He's on there, man. Like, uh, probably just like a couple stories about the, you know, putting the album together. The one of the very first songs I got done was Apathy and then Self Titled. That just like, that just came together so fast. Um, I sent the beat to Apathy and he was just like, and I was like, yo, can we get Self on it too? And they like sent it back within a week. And wow. then, um, yeah. And then, uh, DJ Eclipse did all the cuts on, on like, on like everything. Um, so, oh yeah, I get Crime Apple. He's oh yeah, on it. Crime Apple, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's just names coming out of, uh, coming out of left field that are on it because I just oh, forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, Recognize Ali, J. Royale, the God, uh, the God Fahim um yeah it's just like don't you, have, don't you have last emperor on there too no i don't think so no, no? okay 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 I, i'm mistaken that my bad my, my bad yeah and That's also my... what's and also what's cool about the album is that all those songs you know have 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 multiple guys on each song yeah but then i have a solo i have a solo junk song and it's on like a it's on like a JMT type beat. So it's like stuff that he never raps on, but, and then DJ clips, like junk spits, like a 48 bar verse. Like it's like a, it's like a two minute verse. And then the end is uh, DJ clips cuts. And it's just like, I wanted to do like different stuff. Like, you know, not like just like, you know, verse hook, verse hook, end of song. So yeah. I wanted to do something different like that. So it's like really cool, man. And then, um, you know, I think some of the collabs are are stuff people wouldn't expect, like Ari the Rugged Man and Murs is one yeah. song. So, um, you know, Evidence and Big Twins, they've they're obviously connected, you know, through Alchemist and all that. But, um, you know, Sick Jack and the Mad Child is a song. I don't I don't think they've worked together. I mean, maybe they have, but. but um, not that I'm familiar with. Yeah. And like, so, 
Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, it, it is going to be a problem trying to get a vinyl because it's like 20, it's like 24 songs. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to fit. Oh yeah, yeah. Unless you did like a double, uh, double vinyl or something. Well, I mean, even that you'd have to maybe do a triple or something. I don't know how much room you can even fit on one side of a vinyl nowadays. Like, I know. So I don't know. I'll just have to release a bunch of singles and then see, and then go, from there. <laughs> and then go from there. But uh, that's incredible, I, man. Uh, yeah, I remember when I've, you posted the track list, and I was like, "Yo, some of these collabs, like this is crazy." But yeah, and then I, yeah. I looked for it for like twenty minutes before the interview, and I'm like, couldn't find it. And I'm like, "Fuck!" I'm like, yeah. "Well, you know what? We'll just ask him about it, and he can kind of he can just elaborate on some of the highlights himself." Yeah, yeah, I got a, uh, I uh, I got Blind Fury. Yeah, on yeah, there. Blind Fury on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Locksmith, Jaron Benton, Gmo Ski. Yeah. Yeah, Gmo Ski, bro. <laughs> yeah, I like, th there's so many guys on it. I literally forget who's on it. And like that's the one thing I thought was really interesting when you posted it because it was like you know you do have your like your regular like the people you would you would expect Sea Lance to go to for verses, but then there are so many unique ones like Black Poet, Crime Apple, Gmo Ski. You know what I mean? Like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah, I know. Like. I'm sure, like, when I announced the album, people knew Paz was going to be on it. Like, yeah. they knew Ill Bill would be on it, Snack, R.A., uh, Merck. So that's why I was like, yo, I'm going to reach out to guys I've never worked with. Like, I've never worked with Big Twins. I've never worked with Evidence. I've never worked with, um, well, at the time, I never worked with MERS, but then we did a, a, uh, a two-song vinyl that came out uh, probably, like, a year ago. But, oh, really? um, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, yeah. It was uh it was released through Fat Beats. It's it's only a vinyl, like it's not on um Spotify or Apple Music. Oh wow, fuck eh? Yeah, yeah. that sold out by now. Yeah, I think it is. And then uh I, I never worked with Black Poet, so you know I really wanted to get those guys on there, but man, big show should have made it happen. <laughs> oh man oh man next yeah. time though you know, i can't wait to yeah i don't show. i don't i don't plan on like releasing this album and then never releasing an album again so yeah you know i want to try to follow up with like a an ep after this with with more so guys that i've never worked with like you know you know, I don't want to do like the whole like i mean i'm sure they'll be down but i don't want to do the whole you know pass snack mark again yeah you know what i mean so i want to i want to do uh, stuff with you know like i want to work with ransom i want to work with uh yeah right <laughs> I, I seen the other day you posted he was uh interacting with you and followed you and uh was commenting on your beat so you you uh you, yeah, you start that yeah. my communication there all all i need in it all i need is an email and then it's game over <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Yo, Rand has been killing shit, man, for the last few uh, years. Holy shit! I remember, I remember first hearing him. Paz put him on one of his uh, solo albums. I think it was Cornerstone of the Corner Store. Yeah, Ransom. Run. That was like the first time I heard him, and now he like now he has like a new album every three months or something. Yo, right? he's been he's been killing shit man i remember him from the mixtape circuit you know like back like desert storm mixtapes and like those <laughs> days you know what i mean and like uh him and budden and their whole little beef and shit and then i didn't really hear much of ransom for for some years and he was on he was on the pads joint and then yeah it's like you said he's resurfaced in the last few years and just been fucking consistent killing shit just yeah. killing. I'd love to hear yeah. work together i'd love to hear you and adam g work together too i think i think he would sound I think you could bring something different out of him, and I think he would he would complement whatever you brought to the table pretty well too, man. Yeah, yeah, I gotta reach out to him, man, because obviously being from Boston, like it's just a no brainer. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 pretty accessible too. I I did a song with him back in like 2013 or so. He was yeah, he he you know yeah he was very professional, quick with it, easy, easy yeah. to go good guy like. If I could get an, if I could get a verse from Ed OG, I mean, you could probably do it 
20 times. <laughs> yeah. Your head, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love, I would love to hear that too. Like, you know, and, and I like, I like how you, you, you know, once again, like you said, like, you know, future EP, you'd like to do it with different people that you haven't worked with. And once again, like stepping outside of that comfort box. And I think like some of the stuff you could create with some of these people, like I'm excited to hear that poet joint. I'm excited to hear that crime apple joint. I'm excited to hear that Gmo ski joint. Like, yo, that's going to be some, that's going to be some shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this too. Um, like without giving away what the album sounds like, it's highly influenced by um, JMT. Woo! Yeah, so there's a lot of um, 80% of the album is mixed by Scott Stallone, who's, oh, really? who's yeah, who's who's mixed every Jedi album and every Paz album. So he kind of he 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 sprinkled a little of his magic on there too. Oh man, that's so dope. That's so dope. Yeah. And do you have a uh, when are you plan on releasing the album? Do you have anything set in stone yet or not? I'm planning, I'm planning on releasing the first single at least by the end of the summer. Like I'm trying to get that out. And um I'm gonna have merch. I'm gonna have merch for the first single. But uh no. but since I've never really released like an album with a bunch of artists i've been told by everyone like snack has told me mark's told me chris webby's told me that this like a good strategy nowadays is to release a bunch of singles so and like you know since i have so many of those guys i'm gonna like you know release a bunch of singles first and then and then release the full album on vinyl but yeah. you know i have to i gotta figure out vinyl now with because because the album's so long <laughs> yeah so i gotta figure uh, that out but i know awesome. but i'm gonna i'm gonna release um some singles first and then uh you know i'll plan all that stuff after yeah, yeah. i'm looking forward to hearing it man and uh before we like wrap up on that album too and stuff like i gotta ask because you know they are they're they're part of the home team here you know but how did the lunch from poet joint come about that's that was through Stitch. Okay. That was all. Through, that was all through him. He. Uh, I connected with. I'm trying to think how I connected with him. I think it was actually through Merck. He was like, uh, we were in like a group, like a group chat on Facebook or whatever, and uh, he just released a song. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't. I I, I wasn't familiar with him. He uh, he just he just he was like, yo, I just dropped a new single he posted the video in our group chat and I, uh, and I checked it out and I immediately messaged him on, on Facebook. And I was like, yo, I'm working on this album. Uh, Paz is on it. Merck is on it. Snack is on it. You know, all these guys are on it. Do you want to get down on a song? And then that's when he was like, uh, what if, you know, my crew uh, does a song and I was like, let me hear their stuff. And then he sent me their stuff. And I was like, yeah, and I sent over like four or five beats. They picked one. They, uh, they were another uh, collab that kind of happened like overnight. Like they sent the song back and like the next day. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that song's pretty cool. I mean, it, it's a long song because there's so many guys in it. But yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a, a dope song. And also on the, on the topic of Stitch, probably my favorite song probably my top three favorite songs on my album is a young stitch and blind fury it's what? one of my it's, it's one of my favorite songs on the album yeah yeah there's and, a joint with stitch and fury yep yep <laughs> yo okay yo big shout yeah. out to stitch, dude. stitch is the homie man you know what i mean um I think I think that's really um you know that that goes to show the type of dude he is too you know what I mean like for you to reach out you know for with it with an opportunity like that and for him to be like you know he could have been like yo let me body that solo he could have been like yo like who else going to be on this you know what I mean he could have waited for you to try to pair him up with a bigger name feature but he came through and he's like yo let my click shine and I think that that right there like that is um it just goes to show his character, man. You know what I mean? I think uh, we yeah. need more people. We need more people in the scene that are like that. You know what I mean? Not so. 
you know, like willing to spread the love. Cause you know, like at the end of the day, it's power in numbers. You know what I mean? And you, you can make a lot more bread together than you can, you know, trying to keep it all for yourself. You know what I mean? Right. If exactly. your brother's successful, if your man's successful, if, if homie over there is successful and you guys can all work together, then it's bigger and better for everybody. It's more fruitful. And, you know, and I, and I, I just think, I think that's a really dope, respectable nod. Like, you know, cause I, I had no idea how the track went about. I've never talked to him about it or nothing. I wanted to ask you about it. See, you know, so I, I think that's yeah. really dope. I think that's really cool how that came about. So that, that's big up on Stitch for that, too. That's a big Yeah, man, because when I started, like, when I started my album, like, I wasn't I wasn't going to have him or or Lund from Poets on it because I wasn't, I didn't have a relationship with them. I didn't, you know, like, yeah. I, I was I was specifically thinking, you know, Paz, Snack, Sick Jack, and that self-titled, you know, so when when i connected with him it was kind of like it was kind of like i benefited uh, from it you know more than them like like all the guys in, in the crew were excited to rap over one of my beats but i i benefited because i got like a, a crazy song in return yeah so um yeah so that was cool and then and then like i said one of my favorite songs in the album is is uh, young stitch and uh, blind fury it's like oh, a man. uh it's like a, it's like a uh, 1980s uh, Grand Theft Auto beat. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty uh, cool. I can't wait to hear that, man. That sounds, that sounds like a fun song right there. Yeah, that'll definitely be a single too because it's got a lot of, uh, it has a lot of like, um, you know, mass appeal. I think a lot of people will like it. Yeah. Oh so. man, that's dope. That's dope, man. Hey, Sea Lance, you know, I mean, I, we could keep chopping it up for hours, but, you know, I appreciate your time so much. I don't want to eat up your whole night. I mean, uh, my man, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I had a lot of fun. Touch everything I hold a touch can bust the gold dust. You see me as a threat, but you don't need to sweat. Cause your girl know I keep her wetter than a Chia pet. Motherfuckers wanna hate when you're doing good. Hoping that this feeling doesn't stay. Getting drunk every day, waiting till it goes the fuck away. Then I wake up to another day just to face reality again. Cause the buzz of pain doesn't change a fucking thing. Nothing comes next, I wonder what's next. I used to be atheist, but now I just say fuck it, I'm blessed. Fuck it, I'm blessed. They say it's easier said than done, so I'm working till I get it done.